I can think of any period in uh, human history when uh, people were really certain what to do and had no surprises and no unexpected developments, um, which took them unprepared and uh, frightened because of that. What is novel is not uncertainty. What is novel is the realization that there's uncertainty is here to stay. And because it will stay with us, we are challenged uh, with a task which I think is uh, unprecedented. Uh, not that it was not uh, obligatory, necessary before, but because people were not aware that they have to face this task. Now they are. And the task is to develop an art. Develop an art of living permanently with uncertainty. To put it very simply, it, is, uh, it means living in a combination of um, ignorance and impotence. Uh, ignorance means that we really don't know really uh, in all detail we are relevant. It, it, it is relevant. We don't know what the situation is. And uh, impotence means that even if we knew, uh, we wouldn't have the tools to handle it on the cosmic level. I'm not referring to the universe. I know that it's expanding and it will disappear in several trillions of years, but it is not the immediate concern, you know. The immediate concern is that uh, uh, this marriage made in heaven, uh, power and politics, has, well, not exactly divorced, but uh, uh, separated. They live already in separation. I think that uh, um, they already applied for divorce somewhere in the heavenly court. and. Um, uh, uh, if that is the case, then uh, what we have today in the world is power which is free from political control on the one hand, and on the other hand, politics, but without power. Interregnum uh, is a very tricky world, as you probably realize. On the one hand, it is a very sad constatation. On the other hand, it is full of optimism because uh, uh, it says that, well, one king died. Uh, the old regnum doesn't exist. But there will be another, and that's what enables us and allows us to speak about interregnum. So we assume that there will be another order which will come to replace the old one. I, uh, I was thinking about uh, what, whatever happened to the um, slogans of the French Revolution, uh, liberty, equality, fraternity. Uh, and I think that uh, concerned today in the world, the widespread concerns are not so much with freedom, equality, and brotherhood, but they are rather with uh, security instead of freedom. Uh, recognition of difference instead of equality and uh, network instead of brotherhood. I am convinced about the multiculturality of our society, but I'm suspicious about multiculturalism, which makes a virtue out of it, because that's uh, washing hands, it's Pontius Pilatus gesture, right? Um, People are different, some are much inferior, but that's their choice, then nothing to do with us. And that would seem to, to, to lend itself to um, maybe a positive uh, interpretation of the role of the internet in our lives, that, that actually networks are now uh, achieved through um, sites like Facebook and um, various Net, social networking sites that we've never been more connected to people, and yet um, in your your recent work you you see cause for for danger in this as well because it removes the the human element. If my apprehensions uh, are confirmed, then uh, 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 this real life I'm still using this old-fashioned concept real life. What I mean is offline life, you know. Um, 
uh, if uh, we'll be impoverished. We'll be impoverished. The, uh, one of the major dangers of contemporary time is weakening of human bonds, really. Uh, precisely because bonds bond, because they keep you. You know, what, uh, if, if uh, a relationship becomes a bond, then you are in trouble because uh, uh, you will find grass greener on the other side of fence, but you won't be able to go there because you are bonded. In this passage, there was a very nice little cafe. I wanted to ask to have coffee there, but if, if it still exists, I can't guarantee. Oh, what a pity. I wonder whether they are completely... Ah, all inquiries, so they went bankrupt. At which Ms. Yasho made it over a cup. What a pity, Larry. Later, all these little cafeterias and bars will be full of people enjoying life. <coughs> oh, that's how it goes. Liquid, not liquid, but certain things don't change. I uh, believe that uh, this liquid uh, modern situation created for the first time in this long, long, full of crisis history, a situation in which two uh, inner propulsion, two impulses, you can call them two instincts, I don't know, of humanity, which were in opposition to each other for such a long time, point in the same direction today. And I mean one survival instinct and the other the moral impulse, uh, which I believe is very deeply settled in every human being. The only uh, uh, way of following our survival instinct, which has been, as I said, collectivized, I can't survive alone. I need humanity in order for my sur uh, to survive alone. Now, if you want to really follow the, the promptings of our survival, we need to be good to each other, as simple as that. It's not a recipe for a cloudless life, but I think it's a recipe for sensible life, for sensible and made to the measure of the true potential of humanity. Well, that's the last phase which was left to, to me, is the phase in humanity. Well, it, can, it creates a lot of problems, but also is supreme expert in resolving them. Photographic paper, to me, is the media of solid modernity, which sends the message that once you commit it yourself, that's the end of the story, right? And this sends a different message. Nothing happened, you know, you can start again. It's until further notice.